r slash credit. What is the craziest or most unprofessional thing a teacher ever did when you were in school? I had an English teacher in high school for a few classes, Mr. Williams. I'll make a list of some of the crazy shit I can remember him doing off the top of my head. I'll let you decide how professional it is or is not, because I learned a lot from the dude. 1. He would do dramatic readings in front of our class when we were reading a book like The Crucible and openly weep while doing it, and if you laughed he'd yell at your or throw things at you, like the book he was holding. 2. As we were talking about changing rules of warfare during the Middle Ages we were talking about how the families of knights would line up along the sides of the battlefield and spectate, like it was a sporting event, and, if I remember correctly, it was the French at the Battle of Agincourt that went along the lines killing civilians out of spite that changed that. He told us this story in my friends and I started cracking up laughing, and he called us worthless sacks of shit. 3. We were reading Lord of the Flies, and he had us basically run, as a class, a role-playing scenario where we had all crashed on a desert island and had to survive. He did a pretty good job setting it up and was ruthless in the application. If we didn't take care of our waste or bury the dead we would have random people die from disease. If we wandered about we'd lose people to deadly animals. I ended up being the last one alive after a couple of simulated weeks. 4. He would tell us all the time that he had tenure, so he could do whatever he wanted to us without getting in trouble. 5. We were all fairly sure he was having an affair with his tar. 6. He taught a Shakespeare class where none of the homework was due until the last week of class. He was basically daring kids to destroy themselves by waiting until the last week to do an entire semester's worth of work at once, and several fell for the trap and he accepted zero excuses. 7. The first class I had with him, we were in a lecture hall with seats that went up risers. When he had to hand out papers to us, he'd grab an armful and walk up the steps and just throw them into the crowd in handfuls, and we had to try to grab them out of the air, or, most likely, off the ground. 8. He told us that he wasn't allowed to publicly announce grades anymore. He used to do it to shame people into doing their work, and he thought it worked very well. But, he did staple candy to our assignments and tests before giving them back to us during class, in front of everyone. He made no mention as to the reason why, I guess he was just a generous soul. The candies were smarties and dum-dums. Unfortunately I was a good student who preferred the suckers, so I'd regularly trade. 9. He hated being interrupted while teaching. I can't underline this enough. Hated it. Our class was in the morning and a few times a week they would do morning announcements. It made him really mad, but every once in a while it would happen. While he was at a particularly peak moment of emotion or distinction and he would lose his shit and start throwing things. One day it happened while he was reading to the class and he climbed onto a chair and ripped the speaker out of the wall and opened the door and threw it off the second floor balcony into the large gathering area, the mall, below. He went back to his reading like nothing had happened. The next day my friends and I were sitting and goofing around before class started and a repair guy came in with a very tall ladder to reinstall the speaker to a greater height before Mr. Williams got there. Later that day we were taking a test and the announcements came on. He spun around to stare in horror at the new speaker high up on the wall he hadn't noticed. He started screaming why I die, why I I I I, and ran out of the room and down the hall. We could hear his screams die off in the distance and then suddenly reappear over the speaker in the background of the poor kid giving the announcements. He had run down the hall at a sprint and charged into the office and ripped the microphone out of the hands of the kid doing the announcements and there was lots of yelling before the sound was cut off. They must have reached some sort of deal with him on the subject because the announcements happened a little later in the day from then on, closer to the bell, and he seemed to take it more in stride. I'm sure there is more, but this is all I can remember off the top of my head because it was almost two decades ago now. If you think I'm lying about this you are not alone. I've been telling these stories for years and people think I'm making them up, except the people who were there. Had a teacher in high school who staged a fake nuclear meltdown for our class while we were studying the Cold War. 
This was a long time ago. Over 25 years. I'm not even sure you'd get away with it now. Anyway, he slowly fed us lines for weeks about the nuclear plant a couple hours away having some minor issues. Even drew a diagram on the board of some fishes forming somewhere. Then he would ask us if we had heard anything about it. We hadn't, of course. On the day if had the principal come over the speaker just to our classroom, we of course thought it was the whole school and tell us there was a meltdown happening at the plant told us to cover windows, he had supplies for us to do that with. It couldn't have been more than 5 to 10 minutes that we all thought we were going to die, but it seemed like much longer. Of course no one had cell phones at the time. Afterwards, he gave us all a piece of paper and asked us to write down our thoughts. I think a lot of us said he was an asshole, including me, although I later apologized. Afterwards, I felt like it was really a fascinating experience to go through and really meaningful, but it was kind of crazy. The whole school was talking about it for a while when they found out. He is still my favorite teacher ever to this day, though, he was fantastic. In 7th grade I was depressed and wrote a suicide note. I didn't have a plan to take my own life, but I wanted someone to hear my pain. I left the note either with a classmate or in the trash where someone found it and reported it to my principal. I went to a private Christian Lutheran school, so I've had the same students in my class since I was in second grade when I started attending. My principal took it upon herself to go into the front of my classroom and tell the entire class that I was suicidal and needed to be watched. She explained to the class, I was sitting there embarrassed and shocked that I was not to be going to the bathroom by myself and I had to have a companion. I was humiliated and my parents were furious when they found out and they wanted to take action, but at the time I begged them not to. If I could go back again, I would have let them so this principal learned from her mistakes instead of publicly shaming a depressed middle schooler. Not as crazy as what most people have said, but my Apush teacher was a piece of work. This was my junior year of high school and there was a guy in the class named Alex. Now, Alex did slack off and was the class clown. I found him annoying as hell and didn't like him one bit. But Mr. K would tell him in front of the entire class he's going nowhere. He might as well drop the class. He's going to get a zero on the app exam. He'll be working at McDonald's the rest of his life, etc. You can talk to a student privately about how it may not be in their best interests to be in the class, but the way he said it and that he did it in front of the entire class was really awful. Multiple people in the class went up to administration about it but nothing happened. For more context, this is the same teacher who didn't let girls in their junior year of high school go to the restroom during class more than twice a semester because he thought they were genuinely skipping class. Multiple people just bled onto their chairs because he didn't let anyone leave. The first thing come to mind is the time I answered a question with a rather stupid answer and he took his forefinger and jabbed me full force. Hard as one can when jabbing a finger anyway into my forehead and called me dumb. He caught me by surprise, so the jab had the effect of flinging my head back. I wasn't injured obviously, but surprised and embarrassed. I'm not the brightest bulb in the box, but I did try to answer the question damn it. Lol. Despite the fact it was like 15 years ago, and I can't even remember the teacher's name anymore I still remember the moment he touched me, and the class laughing clear as day. Good times. Damn I had a few of those moments. I was already an introvert, but I think that things like that made me even more withdrawn. In 10th grade home room, which isn't even really a class, but at the Catholic high school I went to, it served as a 30 minute lecture on morality, I was trying to finish us some last minute algebra questions that I had to turn in later. I remember the guy back quote teaching the class saw books on my desk, came up to me, grabbed them and threw them all in the trash as the entire class sat there and watched. I was already a quiet kid and didn't know what to say at that moment. I just felt my face flush as I heard everyone break out laughing. Damn. Extreme reaction from the teacher much? I think there's nothing worse than the class laughing at you. 
I have always had friends, but out of the friends I suppose I was the one people were always like, why they friends with her? I got picked on a ton for being emotional, and while we weren't exactly poor I definitely lived in hand-me-down adult clothing that was out of style once I reached the age to wear women's clothing instead of strictly kids clothes, and I rarely had name brand anything. I was an easy target. Couldn't pay me to go back to those days. LOL. One year I was crying because my father had, yet again, cancelled my visit to him because he was busy acomanic and refusing to see me. I was really hurt and was crying in class the teacher screamed at me for crying at my desk and then proceeded to march me to the front of the class and yell at me to stop crying needless to say screaming at me just made me cry more. I don't know how long she actually yelled at me but it felt like forever. By the end I was sobbing in the hallway it's not a very clear memory, but the memory of being a third grader being screamed at for crying has stuck with me. I'm easy to cry, but I'm still ashamed to admit I'm crying at all because of this. Happy ending though, it was this incident that ended up having her fired at the end of the year also I've cut ties with my father at this point. Long post, TLDR at bottom. For my first two years of college. I went to a local community college. In my first semester, I took English composition. I've always been strong at reading and writing, so I looked forward to the class. My classmates were awesome. We had a study group. I was 18, there were some people in their mid-twenties, a transgender girl, a woman in her 40s, this hippie guy who would randomly be gone for a while, just driving around. It was really fun. But, the instructor was another story. She was young and fresh out of her graduate program. She did lots of things that were super unprofessional, but I'll tell you about the worst one. She had a personal blog where she blogged about her life, education, how woke she was, etc. It was an assignment that we had to comment on three blogs weekly. That was bad enough, but it gets worse. We had to turn in a paper for something else, and many people did poorly on it, or didn't put the time in that she expected. So she blogs about how shitty we were on the blog that we would all see. So my classmates go off on the blog post about her bad teaching and her ridiculous assignments. It was incredible to watch. The rest of the semester continued to be awkward, but I did at least make some good friends. My HS drama teacher for some inexplicable reason, told the class about drinks that would make a girl blush. She listed them off, long screw against the wall, sex on the beach, buttery nipple, etc. while running her fingers through her hair and sighing all sexy like. She also made an appearance in the school musical wearing teeny tiny short shorts. We had a history teacher, HS, who had a habit of coming up behind the male students and leaning forward so her rather impressive tits pressed into your back while she asked you a question about the lesson. She did it to me once or twice, but there were some guys she repeatedly did this with. She was more handsome than beautiful, with a trim figure and a short dark hair. Married, of course. A few years after graduation, was catching up with a classmate and found out that one of those guys she did this to probably was the father of her kid she had about a year after my graduation. Because they had been sleeping together for about 3 years starting in his junior year and for a year after graduation. We are pretty sure it was with husband's permission because they are still together and rumor is she had wanted a child for a long time but they couldn't conceive. I had a teacher who did this as well. I went to HS during the braless 1970s and our art teacher was drop dead gorgeous and braless. She would wear these absurdly thin forks silk print shirts that left absolutely nothing to the imagination. Like your history teacher, she would come up behind you to look at what you were drawing or painting, and it would press her breasts into your back. Because she was braless, you could feel her nipples against your shoulders. Another thing she would do was to bend down on your right hand side to look at what you were working on. Women's shirts buttoned right over left, so this had the effect of completely exposing her right breast and nipple. She absolutely knew she was doing it. There was no way she couldn't have known. She would pause there pretty much for as long as the boy she was next to was staring. Best part of all was that she was super charismatic 
and attracted all the hippie slash artsy girls in school to her classes, and they all loved her so much that they developed similar fashion sense and many of the same mannerisms. I saw more bare titties via loose fitting peasant blouses and half unbuttoned forks silk print shirts in that art classroom than most people see a strip club on a Friday night. I took every damn art class that school had to offer. Macrame, lapidary, painting, sketching, multimedia, whatever. I took it. Still can't draw anything more than a moderately complex stick figure, but I did gain an appreciation for fine art. In 6th grade, we had a school project to come up with inventions. Most of the ideas were stupid kid stuff like an extendable arm, so you can reach stuff without getting up. In fact, I think 3 different kids came up with that same invention. I decided to be different and my idea was a self-cleaning carpet. Like most kid inventions, it didn't really work, it was just an idea of something that I thought would be cool. We were 11, not engineers. Anyway, we had to give a presentation in front of two classes, and my teacher apparently thought it was the dumbest idea she'd ever heard. She proceeded to make fun of me and berate me publicly and tried to get the other kids to join in on it. If that wasn't bad enough, it lasted a ridiculously long time 11 year olds aren't exactly known for empathy, but the entire class was uncomfortable and felt bad for me. It was at that point we realized we didn't have a very good teacher. Also, I got a D. I was clinically anorexic in elementary school because of a medical treatment I was going through at the time. I didn't intentionally starve myself, the medicine just completely removed my appetite and I didn't feel hungry, even after a day of not eating anything. I was extremely underweight, think daddy long neck for an example of my body, and very self conscious of it, and my 5th grade teacher was very sweet and motherly to me, always bringing me homemade snacks to get me to eat something. The other 5th grade teacher wasn't aware of my condition, she just thought I was a picky eater. One day I was walking past her classroom to go to the office and she happened to be outside the classroom. She yelled, where ya going, little anorexic woman. Not nearly as bad as some of the other stories on here, but still not a nice thing to say to a 10 year old kid. Definitely didn't help my self esteem lol. My pet teacher got very close to being fired. I have phonophobia, which is a fear of loud noises, and the school bell would trigger it, so I would cover my ears when it went off. One of my bullies told this rabid pet teacher that I wasn't getting changed out of my packet due to covering my ears in anticipation of the bell. The pet teacher came marching through, screaming at me, and started trying to drag my hands from my ears. She was calling me a freak and saying it was pathetic, then would pull on my arms some more. I couldn't take my hands away from my ears because the phobia makes my hands lock. When she did let me go, I ended up going to my biology lesson in tears. My mum went ballistic over it, called the school, and the pet teacher was real close to being fired. This was on top of reports from other parents about the same teacher manhandling students and even dismissing kids with broken fingers as being soft. Copy slash pasting from the last time I answered a question like this. Late to the party, but this one still sticks with me. In high school, we had a substitute who was a little off. She was absolutely sure the pilgrims came to America on the land bridge, for one. She actually marked our tests wrong if we didn't give that answer on a quiz about pilgrims. So anyway, one day, we are sitting in class and second block lunch lets out. The classroom happens to be right next to the cafeteria, with a glass door that leads outside to the little courtyard between the class and the cafeteria. One student decided it would be funny to slap the glass door on his way past after lunch, which startled Mrs. Crazy. Mrs. Crazy asked the student's name, and when someone gave it to her, she fucking swat kicked the door open, metal push bar, not the actual glass, stepped outside and yelled after the student, student, get back here you communist. Swear to the gods. This was about 8 to 9 years ago, and I still don't know why slapping a door makes you a communist. We had a business teacher who my family and I were pretty sure was on some sort of drugs. 
she was always sort of out of it and always had to get other teachers in to discipline the class whenever we got out of control because she could barely teach us let alone focus enough to lay down the rules. She'd take moments to just walk out of the classroom and complain to other teachers in the corridor about her life, then walk back in and say nothing while classmates were throwing shit across the room. One moment I remember clearly was when she accidentally shut all our computers down at the same time. I don't even know how she did that during one of our course orc projects. We couldn't interact with our computers during the small 5 second countdown and just watched as all our unsaved work disappeared into the other. Yeah, needless to say we were all pretty pissed off. This lady was an it teacher too. I couldn't believe how disorganized her thinking was considering her position in the school. Her handout sheets would be all over the place and you'd need to decide for the order in which you do things, she'd forget what she typed up, or misunderstand her own sheets and you'd get nowhere. It'd get so bad that we'd spend a full hour lesson trying to get through a single sheet because of her confusing instructions. I'm just glad I no longer have to be taught, or well, taught by her. The internet does a far better job than she ever did in teaching kids how to use computers and how to set up your own company. Edit. Oh god I forgot to mention I saw during my final year that she got sent to the hospital after trying to open up a broken window. The window had a sign on it and everything saying it shouldn't be opened and was going to be fixed soon. She tried to anyway and it smashed on her head and people had to call an ambulance. She was okay but geez, you'd think schools wouldn't hire someone like that to teach multiple classes of students. My third grade teacher was absolutely horrible. I was in a Japanese immersion program all through elementary school where half the day was in Japanese with one teacher and the other half in English with a different teacher. Our Japanese teacher, I'll call her Miss Smith, was horrible and here are some examples. She made every single student in class cry at one point or another, and many of the parents too. She would tie kids to their chairs if they were too wiggly or restless. Whenever a pencil or other small object was found on the floor she would go into a huge rant about how we were trying to kill her because she could step on it and break her neck. She told parents her door was always open, but also forbid them from walking their children into class in the mornings. We were 8 year olds. She encouraged us to participate in extracurriculars like after school clubs or reading the morning announcements, but then did whatever she could to make us late for said engagements and refused to take responsibility for it. This is just a small sampling. Because she was from Japan and it was so hard to find Japanese teachers they didn't get rid of her for much longer than they should have. They moved her around to a couple different schools slash programs trying to find the right fit, but finally had to fire her and ban her from the school district. That happened around 2006 slash 2007, when I was in middle school. Sometime in high school around 2009 slash 2010, we got word that she had been diagnosed with some kind of very painful, terminal cancer. Our Japanese teacher told us this solemnly and no one reacted at all. She repeated herself then finally this one kid who was known for being an asshole said well, that's karma. It's a mean thing to say, but it's true, and we were all thinking it. She was a horrible horrible person, and while I wouldn't wish cancer on anyone it is really hard for me to feel bad for her. I have no idea if she's still alive or not. In grade school out school was going a renovation and our shop teacher had to spend half a year teaching off a blackboard and he told this kid to stop talking and after about the third time he chucked the eraser at the kid just as he was turning around and smacked him right off the forehead. Even better as it made a massive cloud of smoke and he started choking. Fourth grade teacher had a fit and grabbed a student who was sitting in one of those chair slash desk combos by the backpack and dragged him out into the hall, except the kid's foot was caught in the desk and dragged that into the hall with him. In high school I was accused of plagiarizing a book report that was professionally written and after spending an hour trying to find where I copied it from and finding nothing I got a BA I tried real hard in that class after that shit. Thank you so much for watching the whole video. Please leave a like and subscribe.